Hi, this is David. Today I want to show you some of the cool animation features in PowerPoint. I work with PowerPoint quite a bit, and sometimes it's a little bit of animation can really snazz up a presentation and grab the user's attention. I've got a sample slide here with uh, some text on it and some shapes and a picture. I'm going to select the picture here like that, and then I'm going to add an animation. And everything in animations is here on the animations ribbon right here. You can see by by default, it'll show a bunch of popular entrances. In fact, if I do this down, you'll see that there are four categories of animations. Entrance, emphasis, exit, and motion pass. And I'll show each of those here. So for example, if I want to add an entrance, I can fade in right there. And what that will do is it'll say on the first mouse click, this thing will fade in. I can show you that right here. When I click the mouse, it fades in. I can also add some more. Uh, I can add an exit. Now, what's strange about this is if I just use this ribbon right here, then clicking it again will replace the entrance animation with an exit animation. So I don't have two of them. This is probably not what I want. Now when I click on it, it exits. It fades out. Um, and there are different types of entrances and exits, and so on, but I'll show you in a second. But really what I want to do is add an entrance, fade in, and if I want to have it fade in on the first mouse click and then fade out on the second one, then I need to add an animation. So here, I'll do an add, I'll, instead of fading out, I'll do something like, uh, how about float out, like that. Make it a little bit different here. And now what'll happen, you can see the one and the two, that tells me there are two animations attached to that object. So what I can do is I see this one here, first click, it fades in, second click, it floats out and so on. It's a little bit easier to see if I open up the animation pane over here. You can see there's an entrance. The green icons are entrances. The red icons are exits. And as we can see over here, if I select something, the yellow icons are for emphasis. So if I wanted to add emphasis to this as well, I would say add animation. And these are just the popular ones. I can actually see more emphasis effects down here. In fact, they're sorted by, or categorized by basic, subtle, moderate, and exciting. Um, but I'll just do like a spin. That's a, a basic one right here. Okay, now I've added that. Now this doesn't really make sense that I'm gonna exit and then emphasize. What I wanna do is have an entrance then emphasis, then spin, and then exit, and I can reorder this simply by dragging them up and down. So now what'll happen is that is if I play this thing here, first click, I fade in, second click, I get the spin emphasis, and the third click, it'll fade out. And that's how I can use this. Right now, this little icon on the left of here, it looks like a mouse, that says it occurs on each mouse click, but I can change that. If I set this drop down here, instead of start on click the default, I can say start with previous or start after previous. In this case, if I say each one should start after the previous one, then they'll appear, they'll, they'll occur in order. First a fade in, and then immediately a spin, and then immediately a, a, a fade out. Or a, so let's, uh, let's run that right here. And one click, it'll do fade in, spin, and then float out in here. So that's pretty cool right here. Um, one thing you could do is have these, uh, a really good one is to say, I'll tell you what, let's get rid of these animations here. I'm kind of done with that. Delete that. And I'll add an animation to these three objects here. I'll add them one at a time. The first animation, I'm going to say I want to, um, I'll say fly in like this, and you get a little preview of that happening here. This one, arrows, I think the uh, wipe is a really good entrance effect for this. So over here on the top, I have a wipe somewhere out here, fade, fly, and float, uh, and I don't really see it, but if I, yeah, there it is, wipe. And the wipe doesn't make sense this way. What I really want to do is, when I when this happens, click there. I don't want to wipe that, I want to wipe from the left to the right, because that's the way the arrow was pointing. And I can do that because in each one of these, there are options. Under Effect Options, I can say, in the case of a wipe, it's from the left. I click on OK, and then this one, how about I'll just add an animation to the final one to say, uh, I don't know, how about a uh, uh, float in for the entrance for that. So now what I have here is, as I run this, one click flies that in, second click it wipes from left to right, 
and the third one is right here. And in fact, this would be a really good one, I think, to do one after another. Start after previous, start after previous, right here, and run that. So one click of it, then it becomes a pretty nice animation here to indicate, you know, this, the rectangle does something that leads to a circle. Let's look at a couple of the other options in here on the drop down list. Um, I have under effects options, these are actually dependent upon what kind of uh, object it is. This dialog will change, but in this case, you know, so there could be a delay before and after it actually starts to move. Um, there could be a bounce at the end that gives a kind of a dramatic flare right here. So if I want to give it a half a second bounce to see it, what will happen is it won't just float in. It actually bounces in. Gives it a little bit more drama for that. How long is this actual, is this time? How long is this timing going to last? Or how long is this transition going to last? We can specify that. Um, not only whether it'll occur on a click, but also whether it'll delay a certain amount before it starts. Uh, how long it's going to take. So if I wanted, let's say, to wait half a second before, let's see, let's do the arrow one here. Let's, we don't want to have the, uh, the arrow occur right away, we'll say timing, let's wait a half a second after the first animation, and then we'll have it occur um, slowly. It'll take actually two seconds to occur. And that's just for this one animation here. Let's take a look at that, and we will see that that one occurs fast, and the arrow waits a half a second, very slowly comes in, and then we see the ball. So we can do some really nice things with this. Uh, we also have motion paths. Motion paths are really interesting. If I wanted, for example, let me get rid of these things here, delete those. If I wanted this thing to move around, then I could add an animation down here under motion paths. Here's some the popular ones here, lines. Lines are really popular. It just goes from here to here, and I can move that line, I saw a preview of it right there, but yeah, I can move that line like this from here to here. So on the click, it moves in that direction. But we can also, if I delete that, I can add a different motion path. And you can see the popular ones are arcs and turns and shapes and loops. But if I come down here to more, I'll see all kinds of motion paths that are available here. And I'll just grab one of them. How about a curvy star? Why the heck not? And say OK. And what that will do is when I run this thing, it'll run it in this curvy star direction right here. So if you want something kind of fancy, I caution against doing too much fancy stuff. A little bit of animation is great. A lot of it distracts from what you're actually trying to show. And fi finally, the last thing I want to show you is there are some special things just for text. So this right here, let me get rid of this animation over here. This text over here, I can animate that. And this is sometimes really useful. If I want to take this text and say uh, I want it to, um, let's, how about, uh, we're going to say fly in from the bottom. That sort of makes sense. So that's kind of a nice effect, a little bit. Comes up like this. But I think a better effect would be maybe one line at a time, something like that. Um, and we could do that just by putting a on click in between each of those like that, and that would be nice. This does this. So each click of it brought a lineup, but maybe for this there are some instances when you, on the effect options, you want to say that the text will animate by word or by letter. So maybe that will make more sense. So that it comes up a little bit more dramatically like this. And that first line, when I click it, it actually comes up like this. So we've got some extra things, depending upon what you're animating, that you can do to jazz up your PowerPoint slides. Um, so a little bit of this, what I, I would suggest to you is take a look, just create your PowerPoint decks, uh, add the pictures, add the text, get them all ready, get the content, the information you want to uh, convey, and then when you're done with that, look for little places where 
animation would make a little bit more sense. Maybe a flow chart. I use this a lot where I have some kind of a flow chart where I say, here's part one. I could talk about this component and then the process right here and then it leads to that. And sometimes it makes sense for these to be revealed as I'm talking about them and really emphasize the direction of flow by animating these things in the right direction. Too much of it, it gets too busy. They start to stop listening to you and start looking at your amazing PowerPoint flow. Have fun with this. I know I did. This is David. Thank you for watching.